Inland Sports TV show on a Tuesday night. I'm Pep Fernandez. That's Jeff Gorm. I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm, I'm such like a, like a nonverbal person. I move my yes. hands around, but I got my phone right in front of me. And I don't want to knock over Coach Jeff Steinberg, who's standing by patiently live from Beaumont High School practice, Jeff. I, I just like that you have a little, there's like a glass uh, holder for your yeah. phone. You are big time, and any place we show up, you always have the cool gadgets. Uh, only the best yes. for this show. Uh, exactly. And speaking, exactly. Of, speaking of only the best, we got to get to him right away. He's live at Beaumont High School right now at a practice. He's one of our favorite guys in the world. It's Jeff Steinberg. Coach, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? We're doing fine. Like, hey, we appreciate you. First off, join us live on the show while you're out at practice. I, I can only imagine how hot it is out there in Beaumont. It's actually not too bad. I don't maybe, uh, I don't know, feels kind of like high 80s, low 90s. <laughs> You should work for the Chamber of Commerce, like <laughs> high 80s out there. Uh, but, Coach, listen, you're coming off a fantastic season uh, a year ago in your first year with the Cougars. Going into year two, um, you know, what are some of your uh, expectations for this Beaumont High School team as you look to maybe challenge for a league championship and maybe even reach a CIF championship game as you were one win away last year? Yeah, you know, last year was last year, um, but, uh, you know, you got to really give our seniors a lot of credit. They uh, they set the bar high for, uh, for I guess, this era here. And, uh, you know, I think we're just trying to do the same thing that we do every year is rebuild the foundation, do it better, be stronger, uh, have better team chemistry, do better things. Good job, Logan. Do better things out in the community, and uh, and just build a build a great football program that the community can grab a hold of, and something that somebody could be proud of. Now, Coach, you guys are in one of the tougher leagues in all of CIF. In fact, you had, I believe, four teams that made it pretty darn far in the playoffs. You got to talk about Hammett for the first time in a hundred years, went as far as they did. Uh, San Jacinto, Citrus Hill, and you guys. That is a tough, tough football league. What are your expect expectations? going into this uh, last year of league for you guys? We'd, uh, you know, we'd like, just like, like last year, we wanted to compete for a league championship that didn't happen last year. But, um, you know, we want to in, in the mix uh, so that we don't have to rely on an at-large uh, this year. Last year, we were pretty fortunate to be able to get into the playoffs with that at-large berth. Well, Coach, when you look back at last year, I know we don't want to dwell on it too much, but when you look back and you, you know, you lost the Western from Anaheim by one point in the semifinals and you watch them go on to win the title, do you think back at the last year and think, man, we were so close to going all the way in your first year out at Beaumont? Yeah, you know, it's it, it's funny because those are usually the things that kind of stay with you over the winter, you know what I mean? Like over the off season, even though we were pretty proud of, of what we did, it's just that one being one play away uh, in a football game where we were that close. We were right on the doorsteps and we didn't get there. So I think that that maybe allowed us to work a little harder and maybe showed us that, you know what, we're, we're close, but we still have some work to do. So it keeps people humble. Well, Coach, something that Jeff brought up, you know, the Mountain Pass League has easily become like one of our favorite leagues because there's so much good football in it right now. But you guys are moving to the Citrus Belt League come next season. Are you excited about that challenge and that opportunity to play some, uh, you know, the Cajones, the Revs, the Ukaipas of the world? Yeah, you know, with, with, without, a, without a question, I think – you know, we're going to be kind of struck a little bit by that learning curve going in. But with the way the community is growing, Pep, uh, the school's growing, the community, more people are moving in. We are quickly becoming a pretty big community. And I think that it only makes sense for us to, to become members of that league. So we're, uh, we're excited. We're going to be the little baby brother in that league, but, uh, but we're ready for it. You know, Coach, and talking about that community uh, outreach, you know, I, I see you all over social media uh, doing everything in, in the Beaumont community. But how – what is it like coaching? You know, you were at Rancho Verde where there was – you know, there were several high schools in, in the town you were in. You were in a one-town, one-high school uh, situation. What, what is the big difference between that big public school to the one-town, one-school situation for you? I, I got to tell you, it really brings tingles. Um, in that it brings back lots of memories of Ridgecrest, but to be in a one school community in, in this day and age is far and few between. And I know that it's really important for them here. They're eventually 
someday we're going to become a multi multi school area. But for now, we're going to try to stay at one school, uh, one school community as as long as we can. And it's it's just nice not uh not having to worry about uh you know fighting for kids. And well, I, I guess you always got to fight for kids in a way. You got to run a good program. But we're we're it in town. Like this is this is something that everybody's supportive of right now. So there's you're not getting a town that gets split uh, over three schools or more. Well, Coach, we love the the rivalry with Banning, but I think Beaumont versus Ukaipa is going to be something pretty special uh, going uh, in you know years to come in the future. But Coach, before we let you go tonight, name drop a little bit. Who are the guys at Beaumont High School that we're going to be talking about on Friday nights? We got we got we got quite a few dudes, but uh, some guys that you know, class of 2020. Uh, Logan Perez has been doing an outstanding job on the defensive line, and he was he was all CIF last year. Uh, Kamari Ross returns. He's a, a multi multi sport athlete. Played uh, ran track, plays football, and he was an all CIF player as well. Uh, Jaden Fordham, who plays receiver for us and uh, is a three sport athlete. Which is something that's pretty uh, pretty rare these days. And uh, Frankie Norwood uh, on the offensive line has been doing a good job. And I can go on and on and on. And, and uh, I guess uh, I I gotta mention. Uh, let's see, Eddie McCullough at quarterback. Last year he uh, he was able to get lots of reps at the varsity level and and won some games for us. And he was here and doing a, a great job this off season. And we expect big things. Now, Coach, before we let you go, I have to tell you something. I have a 13-year-old son who likes to steal my phone, and he was looking at your Instagram feed, and he saw your two daughters. And I hate to say this, <laughs> they were go my son is an avid surfer. He surfs like four days a week, and he saw your daughters were going to surf camp. And I, was, I thought he was going to say, wow, his daughters are at surf camp. But he said, um, do you think I could ask Coach Steinberg's daughters to go surfing with me? <laughs> Just, now... Did you send them to surf camp? That was the big thing. And another thing is, how old are your daughters? Because I have a 13-year-old son that was interested in both of your daughters. I've got, I've got one. I've got one around that age. <laughs> but um, you know, my my oldest is uh, we you know they're 14, 12, and 10 right now, and uh, little guy's seven. But that that was a pretty cool experience for them getting those surfing and. It's funny, they came back, and the, the first question was, how much does a board cost? How much does a wetsuit cost? So we went from taking one lesson to now they want to be doing it quite a bit. Well, Coach, I have a couple extra boards, but we have to, we'll have to like take our kids out on a, do, on a date, but we have to <laughs> both be there. Trust me, I'm very protective, <laughs> but my son is very interested in the Steinberg girls. Okay, well, hey, we can arrange that in a, in a couple of weeks. We're going to have a, a week off, so let's talk. <laughs> Sounds good, Coach. <laughs> All right, thank you, Coach. We'll let you get back to practice. We always appreciate the time. All right, guys, thank you. All right, that's Coach Jeff Steinberg out at Beaumont High School, uh, one of our good guys. <laughs> you play matchmaker during our show. I didn't see that uh, coming. Well, I'm not kidding around. Connor, the other day, he was looking on my phone, and he was like, whoa, surfing. And he's like, who are these two girls? And I went, oh, those are Coach Steinberg's daughters. And he said, oh, okay. And then he had like a, <laughs> a, a funny smile to him, and I went, are they cute? And he was like, yeah, they're really cute, Dad. And they surf. And I'm like, all right. So maybe, maybe we, I can be related to a Steinberg. Oh, my gosh. They can be my – I've always – tried to pawn my son off on my all three of my boys on your daughters yeah but if i can't get you i'm gonna go I'm gonna, off. I'm gonna go to the steinbergs i'm gonna be related to one of you guys so that i can either go to football games or we can sit around and you and i can talk sports and you know what if, if for some reason it's all worked out it would be perfect during the holidays because christmas you could go to the gorham house yeah and on like what is it boxing day is yeah. that what they have in canada yes, they, you go to the yes. steinbergs house yeah. on boxing day for canada and another thing is you know uh he's, he's a Steinberg, I, I have my, my wife's maiden name is Smedberg. Steinberg, Smedberg. Oh, it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> like it was meant to be. It was meant to be. <laughs> Jeff Steinberg, we're going to be related. <laughs> Thank you, Coach, for the time. We appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll do a lot more of these live interviews from yeah. practice in the next couple of weeks. So if you're a coach or a team watching out there, hit us up. We can get you live on the show as it happens. Okay, we're looking ahead all the way, all the way to week zero already. Week zero. August 23rd, we picked out our favorite 
favorite games of week zero. Johnny, Anthony, you know what to do. Punch him up. Here's our favorite week zero games because we just can't wait. We're too impatient about the high school football season. We even listed them. Hey, that first one's not very good. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, come on, man. Well, let's go, let's go from 10 to 1 first. All right, let's do that. Carter versus Colony. That's father versus son. Uh, the Randall family at Carter versus Colony. Temecula Valley versus Valley View. That's going to be a shootout, right? A lot of points yes. there. Uh, Santa Margarita versus Rev. Coach Lunsford and the Wildcats. That's a test right out of the gate. Norco versus Williams Field. That's, that's a, a Norco connection. That there's deep Norco roots. Williams Field from Arizona came out here last year. Now Norco is going out to Arizona this season. Paloma Valley versus Norta Vista. Contrasting styles, is that safe to say? Very, very much so. In fact, I'll tell you what, I've seen Norta Vista the last couple weeks. Coach Batdorf has a a lot of guys, a lot of dudes. You got some dudes? Big offensive line. And when you got guys that can run, look out. Traditionally, Paloma Valley scores a lot of points, but playing a little bit of different football since Bert Esposito left. Rancho Cucamonga against Roosevelt. People are very high on Tommy Leach and the Mustangs. San Jacinto versus Great Oak. I've heard San Jacinto from several people. San Jacinto is actually better this year than they were last year, and they How? went to a CIF championship game. How is that possible? They were great last year. Uh, Dennis Gregovich will make his Hemet debut against Chaparral, and Chaparral is another team. I've been hearing a lot of whispers out there that the Pumas are a team to watch. They are that good going into this season. Grace Brethren versus Aquinas. This was a game that was played in the state playoffs two seasons ago. In fact, Grace Brethren, uh, one of the top teams in the entire state this year, and plus their head coach at Grace Brethren is Coach Henderson, the former head coach at Aquinas. So you got all that drama and storyline too. And of course, the number one and why not? It's two of the top three teams in the entire country of these United States. Centennial versus Modern Day. It's not a CIF championship game. No, it is in week zero, Jeff. No, they could, a lot could change. Let's see Centennial jump on the Modern Day quickly and take care of the reins and see if they can go undefeated and be not only the endless sports number one all season, but America's number one team. It would be fun to see Centennial book in their entire season with Modern Day. It would. Beat Modern Day in week zero, see them again in the CIF Division I championship game down the road, and then beat them again. Beat them, mistreat them, cook them up, and eat them. Is that what they said at Ram High? That's what they said at Ram High. That's what I like to say when I'm at home. And our Inland Sports live coverage of the high school football season will kick off in week zero. It will be Paloma Valley taking on Norta Vista, one of those games that we just mentioned in our top ten in week zero as Paloma Valley will make that short trip up to Novi. That's a Thursday night contest. Contest. We will be out there live and amplified for the people, live radio, back on the Inland Sports Channel all season long. And we started off with Paloma Valley and Norta Vista. So if you're a fan of either of those teams, start spreading the word. Let's get the word out there on social media uh, that we're going to be live and amplified all season long. Yes, we will. All right, we come back here on the Inland Sports Show. It's your favorite show live at Teen Vision TV 16. We got a new member of the team, Elijah Green. He's going to make his right. debut next as we talk about the Kenyon Barner Camp at Valley View High School on Saturday. We'll be right back. What's going on, guys? This is Ray Bass from Boost Performance Training. You're watching the Inland Sports Show with the one and only Pep Fernandez. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Ken Sporting Goods. They have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. And boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. God, first of all, I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do 
online stuff for your teams, as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just for, just for certain schools, and and the uh, the fun the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very very good customers throughout the years, and it's just been it's just been a blast. It sounds like a lot. Ooh, it does. So it's two years guaranteed. That third year on the contract is up to Kawhi. Right. right. The player option means like he gets to decide does he want that third year to stay with the Clippers or not. But that's when Paul George's contract runs out. Ooh. That's right. when LeBron James's contract runs out. Are we looking at like another monster offseason? They're course? saying 2021 wow. is the big NBA offseason again. All these free agents are coming up. So it's not by chance that right. Kawhi's contract was structured that way. So he's going to basically give the Clippers two years. If they can get it right, he's in the sports. Monday and Thursday on KCAL Rocks, 96.7 FM, 8.30 AM. Um, I just heard, Jeff, that there's a billboard outside of Staples Center now. It says, like, welcome home, and it says has Kawhi and Paul George on it. Uh, they're already rolling out the red carpet. I saw some billboards driving in today, some uh, digital billboards. Out here? About, in the yeah, IE? Out, in, out in the IE saying home of Kawhi Leonard. And I was like, no, yeah, are you serious? Cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone's on board Everybody's now, Everybody's right? on board, but I'm still not a Clipper fan. No. I might like Kawhi, but I'm never going to be a Clipper fan. And can I – one other quick basketball-related note before we uh, jump into uh, Kenyon Barner's camp is – so earlier this morning, everyone, everyone knows I'm a huge Sacramento Kings fan. Yes. So I guess there's an app. There's a filter. I don't know what it's called, but it makes people old. Do you know yes. what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah, I got it this weekend. My kids were messing with me on the phone. No, we don't have it on right yeah, now. Yeah. It might look like it, yeah. but um, the Sacramento Kings did it. And I was like, that's hilarious. A couple hours later, CBU men's basketball did it with they some of their it. star yeah. players, and they tweeted it out. Some of their star players look like 90-year-old men <laughs> dribbling the basketball. But anyways, it was uh, pretty funny. Uh, we're switching gears to football right now. Kenyon Barner, one of the good guys out there from the Inland Empire, former Notre Dame high school star, uh, had his youth camp over the weekend because we know NFL training camps are starting soon, so they get their youth camps in, come back home. Um, he had it on Saturday, and out there, his first assignment for the Inland Sports yes. Show, we're very excited about this, is Elijah Green. He was out there, caught up with Kenyon Barner, got an interview as well. Elijah, take it away. Thanks, Pepe Jeff. 
the pride of the Inland Empire, Kenyon Barner, two-time Super Bowl champion, came through today, or came through June 13th at Valley View High School to host his third annual football camp. This past Saturday on June 13th, the former Notre Dame High School star and University of Oregon star returned to, the, to host his camp at Valley View High School with the help of the Eagles, the Moreno Valley Mavericks, and the Moreno Valley Bears. Kids ranging from 5 to 18 years old came out to absorb all the knowledge not only in football but in life. The activities vary from footwork drills to competitive other footwork drills and even a competition with the quarterbacks. Everyone had a great time, everyone enjoyed themselves, ate, laughed, danced a little bit, sold some merchandise, and not only did they leave that field with knowledge and confidence, but most of all, memories that they can hold on to for the rest of their lives. Here with Kenyon Barner here at his end at his third annual football camp for the youth. Just a quick question, man. Uh, how does it feel to just be throwing an event like this and just having all these kids come out? And what does it mean to you just to see the talent that's coming out of the Inland Empire? I mean, it's always going to be a special place to me. You know, this is where I grew up. This is the place that made me who I am. This is the place that helped me become who I am. So anytime I can get out here and get back with these kids, help them any way that I can, whatever it is that I can teach them, whether it's something I say, something that I do, or the group of people that I bring with me to help them as well, you know, that's what we want to do. So being out here, man, it's an awesome experience. I think I find more enjoyment than the kids do. You know, I like to mess around with the kids, have fun with them. So it's always a good time. And although it was nice to have Kenyon back in the city, he has to report back to the Atlanta Falcons next week for the training camp on the verge of winning his third Super Bowl. Back to you guys. Great job, Elijah. Welcome yeah. to the family. That was his debut, man. He's going to be famous now. He was great. I'll tell you what, the good thing about Kenyon Barner is does he wear his last two Super Bowl championship hats? No! He goes back to his Oregon Duck roots. Oregon Duck. Last time, last year, I, I covered the, his camp, and he was wearing the yellow shoes. That's right. The golden shoes. Did he have golden shoes, Elijah? No, no golden <laughs> shoes this year. Because he's a Falcon he's now. He's a Falcon now, but it's always nice to see him and gives back to the community. Great guy. Yeah, and uh, hopefully he carves out a spot on that Falcons roster. I think he can because he's so versatile. He can yeah. return kicks. He's a great running back. So uh, best of luck to Kenyon Barner, and thanks for making time for uh, the Inland Sports Show. When we come back, uh, we're going to hoop it up. We're going back out to CBU. We're going to hear from Daryl Trujillo and also CBU women's basketball coach Jared Olson about their, their new schedule coming up, which was just released. Yeah. And and uh, there's some interesting wrinkles coming up this season. We'll be back on the Inland Sports Show. Hello, everybody. This is Mike Maynard, the head football coach at the University of Redlands, and you're watching the Inland Sports Show. guys doing? Coach Bass here letting you all know that we will be opening enrollment for the 2019-2020 Boost Alternative School for Student Athletes in January. Bass is a private school here in Corona, California that emphasizes academic and athletic development for student athlete life as they prepare for high school and college. If you'd like more information regarding our private school, please feel free to reach out to us directly. You can contact us through social media, uh, on Instagram at Boost Training, on Twitter Boost underscore training, or you can contact us here at our gym at 951 one five three two four nine zero four.
freedom, for liberty and justice for all. For every square inch between fruited plains and spacious skies. Marines fight to win. See all the battles Marines fight to win at Marines.com. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Kin Sporting Goods. They have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. And boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. And welcome back to the Inland Sports Show. Speaking of our fine sponsors, which you just saw, uh, I, I heard from some local athletes. They're going to boost performance training, which makes us happy. Uh, Ken Sporting Goods, a local football coach. Yes. His gear at Ken Sporting Goods. We love that. And top it off, spoiled quick quality oil change opened a second I location deep in the Riv. I saw that this weekend. I was going to go down and, and drive down there. But, you know, I was too busy. I was hanging out by the pool drinking martinis. Oh. And, uh, well, you live that highfalutin life. Yeah, look at this. I got a nice tan right now. It's the best tan. I've had in years, Pep. You know, somebody called me out on social media. I'm like, hey, I'm going to spoil to get my oil changed. And they said, hey, grab a wrench and do it yourself, Pep. Whoa, like, whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa. Have you, ever, have you ever done anything like that? Uh, my dad taught me, but that was the only time I've done it. Was, I did it with him on a car. That's it. <laughs> that was That's it. it. That's why I go to spoil. Yep. Uh, join us now uh, live in studio. I think for the first time in, in this studio, yes, at least, because yes. the Inland Sports Show has taken many forms, um, is Daryl Trujillo, our senior writer for the Inland Sports Show. He, uh, is talking a little California Baptist women's basketball. I had a chance to talk to Jared Olson, the head coach of the Lancers. So, Daryl, welcome to the show, man. We're excited about, about CBU basketball this season. Yeah, we all are. Um, the Lancers had a great year in their debut year, 18 and 12, second place in the WAC. Coach Olson was coach of the year, and then uh, Brittany Thomas won newcomer of the year. Did you have any doubt that going into their first year in Division One this past season that they were going to have immediate success? No, you know, the transition is always interesting. I was very interested to see how they would do, but once I saw the, you know, those first eight to ten score games coming through, it's like, okay, they're competitive with the Big West schools. I thought, okay, there could be a really good year in the WAC coming for this Lancer program. So now they go into year two, and it's not like they are an unknown commodity. Everybody knows about CBU women's basketball, especially in the WAC. Um, do you feel like, and I, I know we'll get to this in a second, but from what Coach, Coach Olson said, the expectations are a little bit different now that they know they can compete at this Division One level. Exactly. The expectations are just the same as if they were still Division II Pac West. Compete for the WAC title. See if you can't knock off New Mexico State from their uh, perch on top of the WAC. Um, with uh, their leading, uh, New Mexico State's leading scorer, Brooke Salas, graduating. She was even, she was picked up in the NBA draft, but released. Um, that's definitely a possibility. Coach Olson was very excited about uh, five freshmen that he added to his squad, um, which we'll hear about in the interview. So it's a good mix then yeah. of, of five new players and the players that are coming back, right? For Exactly. The core of his team from last year is back. Brittany Thomas, DeLacy Brown, Caitlin Harper. The first two that you mentioned are Mount San Jacinto products. Correct. Right? And they, I think won state, right? Yes, two years ago. Yeah, state championship. Um, looking at their schedule, we can't go through all the games, but there's a lot of Big West Conference opponents. And I know for, you know, travel reasons and just, you know, juicy matchups with Big West teams, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. There, there are a ton of juicy matchups with those Big West schools, Long Beach State, Santa Barbara, CSUN, who was, I believe, the Big West tournament representative to the NCAA tournament a year ago. Um, and then obviously the uh, renewal of Crosstown this year, that'll be at the SRC. I just don't remember the date on that off the oh, that's top okay. of my head. That's okay, yeah, but. playing a lot of Big West teams. Yeah, and, and talking about Coach Olson, I mean, and, and the entire CBU women's program, I mean, they're just a few years removed from being in that national championship at the Division II level. It's been, I think, the most seamless Division I, in fact, I know it is, it's been the most seamless Division I entry uh, transition in the history of the NCAA. So uh, when you have a lineage and coaching staff like Coach Olson, uh, are his expectations as high as, as, we, as we see him? Yeah, I mean, whack title. Um, I mean, I, we, we know they're still not eligible for the tournament for the next couple of years, but the whack title is still, the regular season title, just like baseball, is not out of the reach. Um, 
run in the WNIT. I know they lost in the first round of Pepperdine last year. We did that game out at the event center. We did the doubleheader, actually. Yeah. Um, but th those things, deep postseason runs are the foundation of what Coach Olson is looking to build at the Division One level. You know, they're, they're not eligible for the NCAA tournament, as you just pointed out, Daryl. But, you know, a, a whack regular season title, another berth in the WNIT. I mean, those are realistic goals they're probably writing down right now as they get ready for the season. Absolutely. Those are 1A and 1B on the chalkboard in his office. So when he had a chance to catch up with him in his office and, you know, there's a longer interview and it will be on the Inland Sports YouTube channel. Anything that kind of struck you like that seemed kind of important or interesting that Coach Olson had to say? Um, I, what struck at me was the, the first thing I, I asked him about was the uh, Wednesday, Saturday switch to the to, in the WAC schedule, which was for them because they're they're As he put it, a lone wolf traveling. So they have no travel partner. Yeah. Um, so. He'd said that that should help with some of the preparation and the learning curve, trying to, uh, you know, be on the road, but yet still get proper preparation time for the next second opponent of a weekend. Yeah, they travel a lot in WAC play. So I think um, by design, a lot of their non-conference, right, is that's why they love the Big West opponents, right? So they can get some good competition, but they don't have to go too far, right? Absolutely. And then uh, San Diego State is also part of that non-conference. I believe it's a home game in the event center this year. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, the Lancers are home for 17 of 31 dates this year in uh, the 1920 season. All right, we had a chance to talk to head coach Jared Olson in his office. Again, the entire interview would be on the YouTube channel, but we condensed it uh, as he, he talks about the schedule going into this season. So here is CBU women's basketball coach Jared Olson. That's one of the things we wanted to do is just really, really give, challenge our team. I think we have a... You know, we, we should have a good team. We have a lot of returners. We were pretty successful last year. You know, and I think one of the things that we're really emphasizing is just challenging ourselves in the non-conference, you know, and not being afraid to go play teams that might kick our butt, you know, because I think we can get better from that. I think some of that's just random. Um, you know, last year's schedule, we were trying to throw it together pretty quickly. You know, we didn't, there's, it's a big change going from Division Two to Division One. I. I mean, you're playing a completely new set of teams. Um, and we tried to pick up a lot of home and homes. You know, so a lot of the teams we played on the road last year, now we're getting the home game this year. Um, so I think that some of that is just random. I think that'll kind of balance itself out over time. Um, but yeah, we're definitely happy to be here. Um, we usually play pretty well at home, so hopefully we'll do a good job. Um, I would hope that we get to a point where we're good enough that some people don't want to play us because we're too good, but we have not got there yet. Um, the majority of our thought process with scheduling is we travel a lot in the WAC, so we want to play as many games close by as we can. Uh, it's been a pretty good opportunity for us to partner up with a lot of big West schools. You know, we're playing Riverside, Santa Barbara, Northridge, Fullerton. I think uh, did I say Santa Barbara. I think yeah. we're missing somebody in there, but you know, we have quite a few of those that we're playing there. We're playing here. Um, it gives us a chance to get a road game against a quality team. You know that we don't have to drive so far. Sports. All right, it's Coach Olson. Coach Olson, hey, we were looking over the schedule. They're playing out of the country during the season. Is that right? Because a lot of teams go during the summer and they play these. Like tours. the men's team to yeah, Australia. Yeah, yeah. Now, what is this out of the, out of the country going to Vancouver? Um, it's uh, I believe it's a second or third year event put on by uh, Basketball uh, Canada. Um, they brought a very elite field last year. Drake, I believe, I saw South Carolina was in that tournament. Um, this year, um, some of the names Stanford. Mississippi oh. State. That's a pretty good team. That's yeah. serious basketball. Um, yeah, USF is joining the Lancers out there. Um, let's see, who else did he say? Uh, Wisconsin Green Bay, a perennial mid-major power. Uh, Kevin Borseth back at the uh, helm of the uh, Phoenix. So, that's, so it's a good tournament, good competition, something that will surely kind of build them up before whack play, right? Exactly. And uh, something that Coach alluded to in the interview was he was not – He's not afraid to schedule people that are going to challenge them, mm -hmm. even, if I ha even if he has to fly you know, halfway across the continent to do so. Yeah. Well, speaking of challenging, uh, when we come back, we're going to shift gears and do a little CBU volleyball as well. We had a chance to catch up with Brandon Higa, the head coach of the volleyball team, and talk about their schedule uh, going into the season. So, Daryl, thanks. We appreciate the time. Uh, you can catch Daryl all season long. He's all over that CBU beat and, uh, of course, high school volleyball, right? So, yep. uh, that, going on. Um, 
We're getting ready to put together some uh, preview stuff here. A lot of our teams are on vacation and dead period. Tonight is the first night of high school summer league action at Moreno Valley High School and at the Pierce Sports Center in uh, San Bernardino. I'm going to try to venture out. Yep. to one night at each of those. Before you know it, man, the, the fall season, will, well, we call it fall, but the, the fall season will be here uh, in August. Thanks again, Daryl. When we come back, CBU Volleyball on the Inland Sports Show. What's up? It's Patrick and Forty Morning on 96.7 KCAL Rocks. You're watching the Inland Sports TV Show. We love you, Pep. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick, quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Ken Sporting Goods, they have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. And boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. who keep our core, our country, and our communities side by side on the winning side. Not for glory, but for honor. For a code that isn't written or spoken, but lived. It's what we do. It's who we are. It's the battle cry of our fighting spirit. Battles won. See all the battles Marines fight to win at Marines.com. How you guys doing? Coach Bass here. We're back at the BPC continuing our series on building power. Today we're going to demonstrate a speed squat and there's three aspects of this. There's a slow eccentric, an isometric, and a fast concentric. Now concentric is going on the way up and it's got to be fast and explosive as possible. So what Zach's going to do is going to get under the bar. All right. Get those thumbs around Zach. All right. He's going to go ahead and lift off. He's going to give me a 2-1x tempo. He's going to go down slow. Pause, then fast up. Good. What I'm really looking for here is bar speed. All right? That pause. And like I said, we're working three different elements of strength, right? We got that slow, eccentric on the way down, that pause, and then fast up. This is a great drill. Turn all that strength, gaining the offseason of power. So like I said, this is a great drill that actually works on three different aspects of strength. All right, we got that slow, eccentric going down. We got that isometric pause, that fast, concentric going up. So while it maximizes power, we're still hitting three different elements of strength. We do it right here at Boost. Today's tip is all about this, the speed squat. And what I want to talk about is how we progress this exercise here at Boost. So we showed you guys a 2-1x tempo that was going down for two seconds, pause one, and then that fast concentric coming up. So what we'll do is over time, we'll, we'll play with the tempos a little bit. We'll go from a, a 2-1x to a 1-1x tempo, going down one second, pausing for one second, coming up. Or we'll go with an x1x tempo with a, a quick eccentric, isometric contraction, and then we'll come up with the fast concentric. So a lot of different ways that we like to progress our athletes. Building strong and powerful athletes is what we do right here at Boost. Grind hard, stay solid. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. 
Sports show just rocking out to that that CBU tune. That catchy little tune. You know, we just saw some uh, CBU men's soccer highlights, and uh, it got me thinking. Uh, our guy Cullen Holt, who's a yeah. part of our team, he's out doing some uh, baseball this summer in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Um, but he's the voice of CBU soccer, and he said, "Hey, uh, I think they scheduled me for uh, I think some Thursday or Friday nights." So I'm like, "How dare they?" It's football season around here. It's, yeah, but it's still know, football. It's just, it's, just, it's just European football. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Cullen will be back. He's, if people have asked about him, he is uh, – is it the River Rats? The Wisconsin River Rats? The River uh, – yeah, something like that. Yeah. The Wisconsin Rafters. Rafters. But they go by yes. the River Rats. River Rats that's so that's where Cullen has been all summer. We'll see him probably like the, the second week of, of our football season here locally. Uh, but speaking of CBU, the volleyball team getting set to have uh, another – is going to be a big season, and they've got a great non-conference schedule. Some big-time teams are lined up. Nevada, Texas A&M, Gonzaga is on there. Plus, the WAC portion of their schedule is Saturday, Monday. So they're going to play two conference games in a week, and it's going to be Saturday, Monday, which – I don't know, Jeff, you're, you're a former college athlete. Would that work out with, with classes and homework and studying for tests and that whole deal? No, it could be a little bizarre. I mean, if you're, if you're on a road on a Monday and a Saturday, I mean, you know, really, it's, it's got to be hard because you got to come back to school that following, you know, Tuesday. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning Maybe. after a flight, you know, coming in from Chicago or Cleveland, or, wherever. Or Rio Grande yeah, Valley. Rio Grande and, Valley. Yeah. That could be tough. It could be tough on those yeah. student athletes. But I'll tell you what, just looking at that picture, Van Dyne Fieldhouse, one of the best venues for college uh, volleyball around. And, you know, my parents go to the games. A lot of people I know go check out CBU Volleyball because it's an event. Yeah. They, they get a big crowd and they're very good. They went 21 and 11 last season. They actually made it to a postseason tournament in their first year at Division One. Let's hear a little bit more from Lancers head coach Brandon Higa. Coach, when I looked at the schedule, uh, a couple things jumped out at me. First, though, uh, the Saturday Monday for, for WAC play. It, is that a big deal to you? Does it matter to you? No, that's not a huge deal. I think it actually might work out pretty good for us because um, Monday nights is, I think it's typically a good night whenever we do have matches on a Monday or there's sporting events. The students really love to come out Monday nights. Um, but I actually kind of like the switch up. It's uh, We get some teams coming in on some uh, the end of some three-day, uh, sorry, three matches and five-day swings. And so I think we could actually have a little bit of an advantage because of it. Um, but regardless, it doesn't really matter a ton to us. We just know we have to play well. Uh, I think our team does well in kind of these weird situations like that. Um, so not a big deal. Just looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, I love the spacing of the schedule. We get a home weekend, uh, and then the next weekend will be an away weekend. And so it balances things really well for us in terms of academics and uh, travel schedule and all that stuff. Can you talk about your, your non-conference? Because some great tournaments. I yeah. think Texas A&M's in there. I think Nevada's in there. Um, yeah. That's some pretty tough competition. You guys had it last year, too. You had some great matches. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I like the, the non-conference. Um, I think our biggest tournament is probably one where we go to Pepperdine and play Pepperdine and Texas A&M and Fairfield. Um, I think that'll be a really good challenge for us, and it comes in the second weekend as well, which uh, I think is always a good time uh, because we usually, hopefully, will have sorted out some things after the first tournament uh, and be ready to play our best in the second weekend. Uh, and then it keeps us a little bit closer to home with the Reno trip and with the trip up to Malibu. Um, so I think it's a really good balance of being able to go a little farther and then staying closer to home as well. 
And coach, just going back to last season and the success yeah. you guys were able to have in your first year in Division One, especially that, that first tournament kind of yeah. put you guys on the map in a hurry. Does it feel a little bit different going into year two of this Division One process? Um, yeah, it does. I mean, we it, it feels nice to have a year of experience under our belt. Uh, we found out a lot of things and. Uh, the majority of those things were really positive. Um, when you go into year one, you just don't know, you know. So uh, you have no clue whether your team is ready or, or good enough or prepared or ready to compete. And they answered all those questions uh, really nicely. And so year two, I think we just feel a little bit more comfortable uh, knowing who we are and uh, what we're going into. But it's going to come with its own challenges, too. I think the schedule's tough. Um, but with a year more experience, I think we're ready. The girls are really excited. Um, they've been here for a while, working out and getting ready and getting prepared. Um, so I can't wait for the end of August when we start playing. Coach Higa, everybody. Excited for another uh, season of CBU uh, volleyball, which will start very, very soon. In fact, he said, when, when am I going to get in studio? And I said, hey, we'll get you in studio. Don't you worry about it. In August, as we get a little closer to the start of the season, we'll get Coach Higa right here in our uh, Teen Vision TV 16 studio. Let's so. get those volleyball. Let's get the whole team in here. Yeah, we can get them in. They're yeah, going to be all good. behind be us. It'll be great. All right, and finally, um, if you're looking for something to do on Saturday and you're in the Christmas spirit, and I, I know you are. Uh, every day is like Christmas to me. I wake up. Up, Pep. I know. Uh, oh, look at that. It, it, the 66ers are going to be the IE Nutcrackers on Saturday night in their uh, Christmas in July game as they're taking on the Modesto Nuts. And yes, that's a Modesto Nuts in the Nutcracker, right? Yeah, Appropriately. I see that. I see that. So they're going to have um, the Nutcracker uniforms. Those hats are amazing. I, I got to get one of those hats. So Steve Went, if you're watching right now, Give if you want to kick us down a couple of hats, we'll take them. Uh, but that's this Saturday, 6.05, first pitch. Uh, get there early with your Santa beanies on bundle up it's gonna be a cold one and uh get the hot chocolate going and i'm ready time. i'm ready give me some snow you give me a snow machine i'll sit in a, a lawn chair in my flip-flops and i'll watch a baseball game i'll have a lovely beverage because there's nothing quite like a lovely beverage in the hot sun santa will be there they'll be playing christmas music you'll fit right in jeff oh yeah that, that's right i used to be santa i'm more of an elf i'm more of an elf you're shrinking i am shrinking i'm the incredible shrinking man uh, big thanks to Johnny and Anthony here at Teen Vision TV 16. We always appreciate the help and their beautiful studio here. Uh, for Jeff Gorham, I'm Pep Fernandez, and Daryl Trujillo and Elijah Green, uh, who they, made his debut they were tonight. awesome. Awesome, awesome. Daryl Trujillo has his hands in everything. Yeah, so make sure you follow him on Twitter. And Elijah's on social media, and then Elijah's going to find out real fast that we mess with each other a lot. Yes. This guy, like, poses on social media a lot, man. I, I think he, he thinks he's a supermodel. He's a poser? <laughs> Is he doing <laughs> selfies? Oh, he loves oh, the selfies. Elijah out, loves the selfie. Check out Elijah if he's doing the <laughs> selfies. We'll see you next Tuesday on your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show.